Hello everyone. Thank you for stopping by Sewing Machine Rehab today. I'm glad you're here. We are continuing our series on the Singer 301 restoration. And today we will reinstall the needle bar. We will also check and set the height of the needle bar as well as check the needle to the timing of the hook. So there's a lot that we're going to be doing today and this video might be a little bit longer because of that. Let's start by going over the parts that you will need. First part that we will reinstall on the machine is actually the tension pin releasing lever. And in a moment you will see why, but basically we only have access to it as far as the screw itself when we have the needle bar out. So it will go back in first. And if you recall, this little lever rocks up and down when you raise and lower your presser bar. This little point right here moves forward and pushes on the tension pin inside the tension assembly, presses everything kind of forward and it removes the tension off of the disc so that when your presser bar is up, you can pull your work out of the machine easily because the thread doesn't have any tension on it. There are two parts, this actual tension pin releasing lever and then the hinge screw that it is screwed on with. And this little hinge screw, I'll show you how exactly it should fit, but these two parts you will need first. Then we will start to install the needle bar. This is another part that I'd like to talk to you about prior to putting it into the machine. Every needle bar for the 301 should have timing marks on it. I want you to look at yours and find the two lines towards the bottom of the needle bar. We have two lines that basically tell us how to time the hook as well as set the height. So this top one is going to be the one that we use to set the height of our needle bar. And this bottom one is the one that we will use to check the timing of our hook to our needle. I actually had to darken these with a Sharpie. Mine were sort of almost worn away in parts. Hopefully you will be able to see them through this process now. And if it doesn't show up on video, I'll insert some pictures so you can get a better visual. Also, take a moment and look at the top of your needle bar. Do you see this cut here? This is where the jib and the needle clamp is going to fit onto the needle bar. Turn that around so it's facing down and look at the top of your needle bar. You may have a little line engraved on the top. If you do, that's great for you because that's going to help you center your needle bar properly in the machine so when the needle is installed the eye is facing in the right direction so i will have to eyeball that to make sure that it's straight if you have this little line it works with this needle bar clamp which also has a little line and a lot of times you can line those two lines up once the needle bar is in the needle bar clamp and you'll pretty much have it centered properly but we'll get to that you also will need the needle clamp and you'll have four little parts you'll have the thumb screw this is what you twist left or right to loosen the needle and tighten it back inside the clamp and then you will have a little jib and this little real shallow screw all of those go together on the end of the needle. And we will go ahead and install these thread guards when we're done. And I just have to say, Singer calls these thread guards. I always feel like I'm saying the wrong thing when I talk about them, because to me, I would call them a thread guide, but Singer calls them thread guards. So 
We will start first by getting this part ready to install. And all you need to do is just make sure you have a little bit of oil on the hinge screw itself. You can oil the threads, but also oil this unthreaded part towards the top of the screw because that's what the tension pin releasing lever is going to rock back and forth on. So it's good to have it lubricated. Then you can put the two parts together and make sure that you get the screw flush up against the lever. Now I will make sure that you can see where this goes. Okay, now we're looking in the nose of the machine. And if you remember, the screw hole for the tension pin releasing lever is right here. So do you see why I said we have to put it in first? Once this needle bar is installed, it's going to be really hard to get anything past it in order to twist and turn that screw into the machine. And even without the needle bar, it isn't very easy. This bushing is sort of in your way, which this does come out by the way. I don't take them out unless I have a really good reason to, but you can go ahead and work around it. It's not very difficult if you have the right screwdriver. We're going to fasten our two little pieces together here and then you get to start the fun process <laughs> of putting them back in the machine. And just because you put them together doesn't mean they're going to stay together, but do make sure that you have that screw set inside the tension pin releasing lever all the way. Now, Rotate your hand wheel so this connecting link is out of your way. Otherwise, it will make you crazy. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to take a screwdriver and I like to just kind of put it on the ends of the screw and twist because it's really, there's no way I can get in the center of the screw head now. And if anyone has a better, easier way of doing this, I would love to know what it is because this is one of the more fiddly jobs for me and I just have to be patient and it might take me a couple tries there. I think I have it started and I'm just, yes, it started. It looked crooked at first, but this was just kind of wonky. So I'll keep making sure that I have pulled this lever all the way up on the hinge part of the screw and then working a little bit at a time, I'll just kind of go on the outer edges of the slot and spin this down into place. And you want to make sure that you get it all the way in the hole and snug it up so that it doesn't vibrate loose while you're sewing and I feel it catch, it's tight. Okay, so now you have the tension pen releasing lever in. So you're going to, when you raise your presser bar now, this will raise up and you'll have a little resistance here from the springs, but it's going to, this little metal part here is actually going to push on the tension pin inside your tension assembly, move it forward, push it out, and that's gonna take the pressure off of the disc in your tension assembly so the thread flows freely. And once you get it back in, you can breathe a big sigh of relief because that is just a little frustrating. And if you didn't take this part off and you cleaned it in place, which I suggested as a possibility when we took all these parts out, well, you're probably laughing at the rest of us right now. So now we can go ahead and get the needle bar into the machine. And the parts that you are going to want to grab are the needle bar clamp and screw and your needle bar. So you do need to oil this up a little bit and it's okay to oil down inside this bushing if you can get in there 
with a brush or a q-tip or something but you can also just oil the outside of your needle bar like that you also want to oil the clamp this part's going to go into that little connecting link so we want to make sure it has a nice coat of oil all around you can oil inside where the needle is going to slide through as well so first let's slide the clamp into the connecting link and that's this piece right here and the way that it's going to go i'm just going to turn this so it's ready for us there we go the way that it's going to go is the hole for the needle bar clamp screw is going to face towards the tension assembly and you just slide it in just like that then you can take your needle bar and it really doesn't matter what position you have it in as long as you have the end that the needle clamps going on at the bottom that's really all you need to worry about right now slide it inside the needle bar clamp down through the bushing and you can stop now comes the fun part of adjusting all of this if you were one of those lucky people who have that little line engraved on your needle bar you can spin it to line up with the line that's engraved on your needle bar clamp this needle bar you know what I'm looking I do have that line it's just so faint and worn away but I can see on the top of my needle bar there's a little mark and if I follow it down I can feel with my nail that little engraved line I'm going to use that to make sure that my needle bar is in the right position and I'll double check it at the end of, of the installation but I'm going to use that as my guide to make sure this is centered properly then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle bar so I have just about a quarter of an inch sticking out of the top of the needle bar clamp and I'm going to go ahead and get that clamping screw installed and I have a new screwdriver to use today I finally sprung for one of the Chapman hollow ground screwdrivers and I don't want to make the mistake of tightening this up too much right now I have it tightened down so tight I can't wiggle or spin the needle bar around very well and I may need to adjust the height of it so now that I have it too tight I'm just going to back it off a little bit until I feel like I can get a little bit of movement without this falling out down through the bushing there we go I can twist and I can pull up and down so it will be easy to set the height so I have my line on my needle bar lined up with the line on the needle bar clamp what do I need to do now now I need to set the height of the needle bar itself and Singer helps us out with this because they give us these two lines on our needle bar to use to check that so I just need to change this position up so you can see down here at the bottom of the bushing because that's where we're going to be paying attention next now comes the moment of truth are you going to be able to see these lines with me so what you need to do is turn your hand wheel on your machine towards spin it towards the front of the machine don't spin it towards the back and watch right here watch the clamp for the needle bar you want to spin it until it is in it or at its lowest point which for me is right there when I do that I want to take and put my focus down here at the bottom of this bushing and on my needle bar 
you should definitely see the first line. Your goal is to find the second line and then make sure that it is at when this clamp is at its lowest point that this second line is right at the bottom of the bushing. That's why you don't want to tighten it down all the way because you want to give yourself a little bit of an ability to wiggle it up to the right height or pull it down depending on what you're seeing here. So I'm not sure if you can see the second line here, but now I have it positioned so that it hasn't disappeared inside the bottom of this bushing. It's literally right at the bottom. Then after I've done that, I will double check my little line here on my needle bar and make sure it's lined up with this line on my needle bar clamp because when I wiggled the needle bar, I took it off center a little bit. So I have it lined up. I can still see my second line right at the bottom of the bushing. It hasn't disappeared, but it's literally right at the bottom. Now I can take my screwdriver and I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this down. I don't want to lose that position at all. That's it. It's been installed. You should have your needle bar centered and set at the right height. If you didn't have this line, then you would be eyeballing this point right here and making sure it's dead center facing the neck here of the machine. But hopefully you have that line. So the next thing that we will do is we will go ahead and get our needle clamp and jib and that little funny flat looking screw all installed onto this needle bar. And because of the way it's designed, <laughs> everybody has their own unique way of putting this back on the machine. I personally find if I can put these parts together and then I will tip the machine back so it's literally standing up on the hand wheel. It's so easy to go ahead and slide this on without the jib falling out of place. So that's what I'm going to do is change the position so you can see what I'm doing and how it works for me. This should be entertaining because I am really working with the camera in my face, but Go ahead and grab your needle clamp. Find your little thumb screw and put that inside the needle clamp first. This just gives you something to hold on to. It makes the part a little bit bigger and easier to work with. Now, the way that this goes on the machine is with the thumb screw pointing towards the neck here you have to put the jib inside this part. And the jib is going to go in like this. So imagine this is on the needle bar and you know that this little thread guard or thread guide has to be angled like this. So I like to take the jib and just slide it. See this, how it has this little round circle here? Inside there's also a round circle on that end where the thumb screw is. You're just going to slide this in and let it come to rest in that circle like that. Now, since you have this up on the end, you can just slowly, carefully wiggle all the parts right up onto the needle bar. And you see, I can see that hole in the center. That's where this funny little 
flat screw is going to clamp down and hold our needle clamp into place. So just want to make sure it's all lined up and then carefully set that screw on top and start it with my finger and then my Chapman screwdriver which I will point out if anybody's looking at these they're not magnetic tip which is fine uh, but if that's something that you really like I didn't even pay attention when I ordered these uh, they're not magnetic tips so okay it's installed trust me this way is way easier than trying to do it with the machine set in its normal position you will drop these parts down inside the hook and pull your hair out so if you're comfortable tipping the machine up this way and just standing up and doing this part so much easier now you have your needle clamp installed onto your machine and guess what we can do now we can check the timing of the hook so let me set her down and we'll do that okay to set the timing or check the timing of the hook you will need a needle <laughs> and the way that the needles go into the 301 is with the flat spot facing out towards the end of the machine so I'm just going to turn my hand wheel which I'm so glad I have my hand wheel on doing this because it's so much easier and I'm going to go ahead and install my needle with the flat spot out make sure it's all the way up into the needle clamp lock it back down and because we don't have the feed dogs on it's so much easier to see all the moving parts inside the hook when you first start to turn your hand wheel once your needle is in I want you to go slowly and be careful because if you didn't get the hook installed properly or there's just something wrong with it as this needle comes down there is a chance that you could strike somewhere in the hook assembly itself so make those first rotations cautiously just to be sure that you're not going to hit any part of the hook assembly so now that my needle's in I'm also looking and I can see how well the needle is uh, lined up it's perfectly straight the way that it's supposed to be so now I'll just start slowly turning my hand wheel and I'm going to watch this needle come down and all I'm doing right now is listening and feeling and making sure that nothing is hitting anywhere that it shouldn't and that is all working properly in that sense if you have your needle striking anywhere here you need to stop you need to go back and look first at the underside of the machine make sure that the hook is pressed all the way up against the shaft that you do not have any gaps there because that would set it off just enough that you would get needle strikes make sure your needle isn't bent that's another reason why you can hit the hook I'm just using a standard needle not, nothing specialty no weird size just your basic standard Schmetz needle to, to do this part now that I know I'm not striking anywhere that I shouldn't I can start checking the timing of the hook to make sure that it's set properly in this machine and most of the time you're not going to have an issue with the hook timing but depending on who had the machine before you and whatever they might have done to it there's a chance it could be off so what am I trying to see how do I know that the hook timing is right well we're going to pay attention now to this lower line on our needle bar as I rotate my hand wheel the needle is going to go all the way up it's going to go all the way down 
and once it's all the way down and starts to go up again, the second line on my needle bar, I want to line it up with the very bottom of the bushing right here. So slowly I'm going to turn that until I get it right at the bottom of the bushing, not disappeared, just like right in line with it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my hook and I'm paying attention to this little point right here. Do you see the second point? Not the point of the jib that's in front, but the one that's right behind it, that's my hook point. As I line up this little line, the bottom line, with the bottom of the bushing, I want to see that hook point right in front of my needle. Not past it, not before it, but sort of just centered right in front of the needle. So I'll turn this one more time. So I'm turning it, I'll let it go all the way down, and as it comes up and I'm watching that second line, just start to go in line with the bottom of the bushing. It's kind of like half in, half out. Can you see my hook point? It is right in front of the needle. It's not before it, it's not after it. That is what you are looking for. And let me try to spin this now, see if that helps. That is what you're looking for. If it were like this, and the line was at the bottom of the bushing, my hook timing would be off, and even that little bit is going to make a difference. If it were like this, and it was past the needle, that's off, and I have to fix it. But for me, with this machine, thank goodness, as I pull this up so that line is just ready to disappear into the bushing, my hook point is right in front of my needle. So if that is how your hook looks whenever you pull the needle up and you line up that second line with the bottom of the bushing, then you're good to go. But what if it's not? That's what we're gonna talk about next. What would you do if your hook timing was off? Okay, if the timing of your hook is off and you are 100% sure, then you are going to need to flip your machine over so you can see the bottom. Because the way you would actually fix the timing of the hook involves accessing parts down here. I am putting a link in the description box below to a video that AndyTube has on how to fix the timing of the hook if it's off because he does such a thorough job of it and this machine, the timing isn't off and honestly, I don't want to fiddle with it. So I think it would just be wise to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at and then direct you to someone who has shot an excellent video on how to fix the timing of the hook, which I have had to do and I will tell you his video is correct. That is how you would do it. To set the timing of the hook, you'll be loosening this set screw and this set screw. And what that's going to do is allow you to rotate the hook without the gears rotating at all. So this shaft will kind of spin inside this bushing here and you can turn the hook to get it positioned properly and not mess with the mesh of these gears. You never want to change the way the teeth on these gears go together. Once you have rotated the hook so that it is right in front of the eye of the needle, basically you would tighten these set screws back down and you would have fixed the issue of the timing of your hook. Andy will point out to you, you have a couple things to watch out for. There's this little gap right here that you need to keep. And once you've loosened these set screws, this gear will probably get a little wobbly on you. 
I will say if you want to maybe find a way to mark the mesh ahead of time using nail polish or something, you can just take a little dab of nail polish and stick it in where the teeth meet here. So if you had a oopsie and things slipped out of place, you could line the mesh back up again. But hopefully you don't have this problem and you don't have to fix it. If you do, go to the link that I'm providing below on AndyTube and watch that video. It sounds a little complicated, but if you go slow, you will be able to fix that problem. Let me know in the comments below if you had to do that and if that video was helpful so I know in the future whether or not it's a good place to send everyone. I think it is. So what we can do now is go ahead and reinstall the thread guards onto the bushing that the needle bar is riding through and we will be done with this part. So let me flip her back over and we'll do that. Oh no, what's going on here? <laughs> well, I like to put these little thread guards or guides on this way. And you'll see why. If you have the machine just sitting in its normal position, these tiny little screws that you're going to have to put onto the machine are going to fall down inside the hook and it's just a pain. So this is the easier way, in my opinion, to do this. Start with this thread guard here, the one that has this funny little tail, and it's going to go onto the bushing like this with that little tail pointing towards the hand wheel and also at the bottom. It should be able to just slide it up onto the needle bar like that. Then I can line up this loop so it's lined up on the hole in the bushing. And this is taking me a couple tries because of the angle of the camera and everything I'm working around. But I'm just kind of seating it in that hole and then I am spinning the screw with my finger to get it started and then I can come in with my short little screwdriver and lock it down the whole way. Just like that. Then the second thread guard or guide can go on and it just start it down here on the needle bar, bring it up, and Actually, the metal on this doesn't all go up onto the bushing. So don't worry if that doesn't feel like it fits. What you need to do is just make sure that you have put this little loop over the hole that the screw goes on. And hopefully that all stays into place while you grab your screw. And then using your fingers, line everything up, give that screw a couple spins to get it started. And then once you know you've got it started in the threads, you can grab your screwdriver and tighten it down. like that. Who aren't you glad that's done? So let's flip this back over and see what it looks like. Okay, so now we have reinstalled our thread guards. The reason why we did this after setting the height of the needle bar and checking the timing of the hook is this wire on this thread guard blocks your view of those little lines as they're disappearing up into the bushing. So I always put them on after I know that is all set. So hopefully that was helpful for you today. And next we are going to go ahead and get those feed dogs on so we can add the presser bar back to the machine. 
I hope you have enjoyed watching this. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you real soon. Have a good day. Bye.